welcome today to my interview with Astro Lada. And I am so excited to be able to sit here and do this. You have been one of the biggest influences on my work and you're so inspirational because you're a mother and you run a successful astrology business. Like, I don't even know how you do all the things you do. It's truly incredible. <laughs> and yeah, so today we're going to be talking about parenting and astrology and just parenting and managing a business as well. It's such a huge topic and I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Thank you so much, Megan. Thank you for interviewing me. I very rarely take interviews. This is very rare, especially, you know, uh, on my personal life or anything, because you probably know that one of the biggest judgment anyone receives nowadays on their parenting and how they raise children. And I only agreed for you to interview me because you're a mother of three yourself. You're also an astrologer who is starting and budding astrology career. So I knew I would not be judged. <laughs> so I can open my heart in front of you. <laughs> and, and you just told me that you're homeschooling the kids for the last one year, which is like, kudos to you. Big respect. I, I don't know how you're doing it. My, what saved me in the last one year during COVID was that we were the only daycare in the whole of Washington that was open where my kids are. And it's like, God saved me. <laughs> so I could work at the same time. So it is very hard, especially in the last one year, to have your own business and to have children. Uh, and uh, no even daycare. I mean, like even uh, I was trying to get nannies, but they don't want to come. They were afraid because of COVID uh, with little children. So, uh, but thanks God, the daycare was there. And uh, it's it's been tough. <laughs> it's been tough, but... Um, Let's say I found, I'm starting to think I'm superhuman and super mom. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely are a super mom. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it, it is incredibly challenging to like run a business, have kids. I mean, the one thing that's helped me through this, you know, homeschooling them this year was that it kind of helped them, like, I think, learn to be independent. They had to be because I can't be like one-on-one -on -one with them every second. Like we're done with daycare at 12, or I mean, uh, daycare, homeschool. And I just then let them like, I'm like, you guys have to play. You have to play so I can work. Like I, I, I can't do anything otherwise. But yeah, and I'm so, you know, inspired by your ability to be able to manage such a large and successful like astrology business while managing being a mother. And I was wondering, like, is there some ways that you found astrology actually has helped you in this process? Like learning about your children's charts, which of course I'm sure you draw your children's charts. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's been a yeah. help. Because I'm very dramatic, I'm a drama queen, I, you know, moon in Leo, conjunct the North Node, like I make a drama out of everything. And, uh, and it, the moon in Leo is not the most parental, let's say, because it, it wants to have fun with the kids and play. But it's really a, like I have no water or earth in my horoscope. So the nurturing, calming energy uh, to you know, that, that children need so much. Children need the feminine energy, water, earth. I don't have any of that. And it's been very challenging for me because I'm the fun mom. I don't have ability even to put structures or regulations. They're not afraid of me. They treat me like, <laughs> like I'm their buddy. And, and I just don't have it inside of myself how to be like with the routines and with the, uh, I can just rough play with them, uh, just uh, dance with them. But that's, that's very small part of parenting. And thankfully, my husband is the opposite. He's a lot of water and earth. He's cancer with Taurus and with Pisces in him. So he has, he's the opposite role. So he has this nurturing, centering energy and he's been keeping this kind of routines. That's what has helped me. But I have my first child is very challenging. Uh, it shows also in my horoscope, firstborn is ruled by the fifth house. And the rule of my fifth house is opposite Saturn. So we have a strong karmic connection there. So I find the firstborn a difficult child. And uh, it's, uh, he's, he's extremely intelligent and everything, but he's extremely stubborn. And uh, he has a very, uh, and he's double Scorpio. 
so Scorpio moon, Scorpio rising, uh, Aries sun, so a lot of Mars energy. He can walk through walls. He can, uh, he's walking around with hammer and <laughs> making holes in the wall <laughs> and he's banging on windows and pushing his sister. And he, he's very strong Scorpio energy plus Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, is in his third house of the younger sibling. And it has four squares or three squares. So he has a very jealous relationship with his younger sister. The first moment he saw her, he started crying when I came from, you know, when I showed him to her in the hospital. So his Scorpio energy, Scorpio children, I realized actually a lot of moms on Facebook, I would say, please help me. I don't know what to do with him. He's so jealous. All the Scorpio, all this intensity is just so much. Uh, and I, I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm an astrologer, but I've never been a mom before. And other moms came up do, that have children with Scorpio moon or strong Scorpio. And they said, it's so important for Scorpio children to give them one-on-one -on -one because they feel a lot of jealousy. So this is what's been our saving grace. I'll take him and go alone with him for a few hours uh, and separating them. And then he's perfect. It's like, if you have a Scorpio child, a Scorpio moon child, they really need to feel all the attention is coming to them because Scorpio is like this, they, they are insatiable to feel, um, not validation, like you're the best, you're good. This is a Leo moon. They're insatiable to feel emotional connection. They want to feel you are mine, I'm yours. And we're merged into one. And when there is another sibling, it's very challenging on little Scorpio kids. So that's what I learned and that's what, that's what's been giving me an insight with him. And the little girl is super, she's Aquarius moon, she's quite independent, she's Sagittarius rising, so it's, it's very easy. But with, with a challenging child, it helps so much to know your astrology. And also, uh, he, there are other things there, for example, with their eating, they both have Saturn in the second house of eating. And Saturn is to be extremely stubborn. It's like, you want to eat one thing and that's it. And they'll go for a whole day. They'll not eat if I don't give them what they want to eat. But both have good aspects to Saturn. So I learned how to incorporate those good aspects so they can, you know, and now they eat mostly fruits, vegetables, soups, home cooked things. Uh, but like I had to work with the Saturn, which is extremely stubborn. Like for example, Milo would not touch food that has color in it. For a period, you know, the this, this Saturn stubborn is like, the soups had to yeah. be white, all yellow. <laughs> but I work with the good aspects to their Saturn and found the way around. So, so there are always hacks with astrology that you can try. My, other, my firstborn as well is Sun Conjunct Uranus. And I knew immediately a Sun Conjunct Uranus, very correct, very exact, plus square Pluto. I knew that he would be highly sensitive to electronics. Like uh, if he has iPads, or if he's close to where the electricity is, if you're charging something, if he's staying close to electronics too long or overly excited by TV, he goes crazy. His nervous system goes haywire. He starts shouting, screaming. He can't calm down, almost like possession. And uh, we've learned to shut off the electronics, like uh, to put like 30, for him, 30 minutes electronics and that's it. And, and so he doesn't, uh, and because Uranus really disconnects you from earth. So you're ungrounded when it's conjunct the sun. Uh, so he needs to ground. So he, we send him out in the garden. He needs to be out. Only, the only place he feels calm is in nature. So, where, so his senses are not overstimulated because Uranus aspect sun can make you overly stimulated. So yeah, these are some of the things I've, I'm doing an astrology lesson. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going. No, it's great. It's so good. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's awesome to hear like your knowledge of astrology is so vast and like the way you incorporate all the aspects, which I'm in your aspects class right now, which is amazing. I love Hi. it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But um, yeah, I mean, that's so interesting, especially about the Scorpio moon and a lot of parenting astrologers I talk a lot about like the moon as a primary thing for parents to look at when they're, you know, first looking at their children's chart. And do you agree that that's the primary thing you should start out with? Or do you think it's just to do the whole thing? So, so esoterics, they've seen, I even sp spoken with psychics, where the high level psychics, and they see that till the seventh year, the child aura is connected to the mom. When I can't sleep well, my children also can't sleep well. It's, it's very connected. They feel the emotions, even if I'm far away, uh, they would, you know, I would, if I'm upset, my parents say they were upset at that time. So they're connected astrally to the mom. 
and they're connected through the moon because the moon is the astral connection. So they're living through the moon till the age of seven. So I clearly see that my son is Scorpio rather than Aries sun, right? I see the Aries sun too, but the sun blossoms the older you get. The sun is the logical, it's the very intellectual qualities of a person. And they blossom more with age after 21, the sun fully blossoms at 30. Uh, but the moon is in the first seven years is the primary, primary indication how a child will behave. And my son with moon in Scorpio opposite Mars. So he comes and hits me, hits the mom, <laughs> Mars. He, the mom gets aggressive and I'm never aggressive. And he's the first human being in the world our child back up, you know, the, the trigger of this Mars. So, you know, he hurts the ones he loves, Mars opposite moon, but he, and he sees the man, the mom Scorpio, very possessive. He's very possessive towards me, very intense. So definitely the moon is the thing. Well, my daughter is Aquarius moon. And she's like, she can be alone. She's just talking to herself all day. Uh, she's, she, Aquarius is not an attached sign. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't mean she's not attached to us at all, but it's much more independent and much more easy. It doesn't get emotional. It doesn't get emotionally reactive and, and doesn't miss us if we separate for a little bit. So yes, just for the first seven years, work with the moon and its aspects and work for example my son moon is in his first house he needs attention on him deep intense emotional focused attention and physical he needs to be physical in the first house my daughter's moon in aquarius which is already detached and in you know chatty uh and non-emotional is in the third house she's like blah, 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 blah. she talks all the time you know and you look at the <laughs> aspects and she has only good aspects to that moon so she's very easy as a child, while my son has opposition marks, and that's and a few good aspects, but you know, uh, trying to Venus. So he has his good side, sides, he's very loving as well. But you have to, and so you have to activate if a child has a very challenging aspect to the moon, like an aspect of Saturn or Mars, um, or Uranus or Pluto, you know, you have to look, is there an easy aspect to the moon? and activate and start approaching this child through the easy aspect. In my son's case, it's Venus trine, uh, and it's also a Pluto sextile. So I use Venus and Pluto soft methods because he does not react with resistance to them. When I use Mars method, where he has a hard aspect opposition with the moon, he immediately gets aggressive himself. So if I try to be Mars and shout him, no, you know, or slap him or, you know, spank him, whatever, uh, he, he reacts. Or if I get too physical, he gets overly excited and gets aggressive. So I have to act with Venus and with Pluto, with the soft aspect. And that's, that's how you do. You, you look at the moon only till the age of seven, <laughs> mostly, you know. Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, my oldest daughter now is... Um, eight, almost nine. And so she's sort of like moving to the next uh, phase, you know, and it's been so interesting. She's Libra rising with an uh, Aries moon opposing Saturn though, but she was actually very much an easy child. And now I've found that some of that Saturn energy is really starting to come up in the Libra zone. So like if things don't feel fair to her, it's, I mean, very, it's like, she's really communicating that now. And uh, wow. So I've had Saturn in Libra, on. yeah. Saturn in Libra. Yeah. Okay, that's the mm -hmm. best position for Saturn. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, she's generally pretty, and she's Cancer Sun in the tenth, and so she's definitely very yeah. um, nurturing to her siblings, which has been a you know a huge blessing for me, especially during homeschooling. But there's certainly this new energy to her, which is like more trying to like assert herself and very upset when things are not there. I mean, and she has Mars in Libra as well, you know. And so she's got this very like strong, like things must be fair. She's like starting to assert herself <laughs> really strongly, which is, has been a, you know, interesting change to watch. And it clearly happened at seven as she sort of moved into this new phase of expressing. Yeah. So how do, how do you Saturn think of it? Like, so works how, in seven ages, Saturn's age is seven, 14. So she's probably coming more incorporating at, at seven. At 7, 14, 21, is the Saturnian qualities that start manifesting more and more because Saturn incorporates in seven years as well. Every seven yeah, years. so 
yeah so that's so right now it's like her saturn has been activated to becoming more the first saturn phase of her self which has I been think, and you said she's been helping you with the children i think to take a mother role of responsibility the moon to mother and saturn to to take responsibility and take care of them and that will help actually when you have that, it's best when you have Saturn opposition moon, it's best to channel it into giving more responsibility to the child in mother, mothering roles uh, to trigger the positive side of Saturn opposition moon, you know. So it, it's actually keep them busy with responsibility <laughs> in that way rather than maybe, you know, Saturn negative role moon, she can get like into moods as a teenager and emotionally she can be very more self-critical. You know, so it's good to keep her busy with such, to, to teach her to be exactly like a, 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 a let's say, a, respon a responsible, uh, caring figure for the little ones. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, and yeah, that's definitely what I've been trying to do. And I realized like on the days, because I'm homeschooling, you know, and honestly, as a mom trying to run a business and also my husband owns another a building business. So we're crazy, you know, and I've like realized some days, you know, when I don't give her enough schoolwork, even it's different. Like she does not do well. She's better to be given like a stack of things to do. They need structure. Saturn moon combinations, they need to have a structured day to know, you know, kind of what she has to do. And uh, it's, uh, she'll be, and, and, and this is someone who can actually, with responsibility, can thrive. So that I actually prefer Saturn moon aspects to Saturn Mars <laughs> because Saturn, <laughs> sorry with the Saturn uh, Mars moon because we have to constantly with Mars moon is very physical I have to run all the time after him and with, with he's either with a knife or with a hammer and <laughs> looking for something <laughs> some tool to do something <laughs> yeah yeah and you know, so yeah, like, so moms who are sort of starting to look into astrology and reading their charts, uh, how do you tell them best to look at their, like their moon in relationship to their children's moon? What is some ways that they can think about like their forms of nurturing and, you know, how their children need to be nurtured? Well, you specialize in parent astrology, don't you? That's what yes. you <laughs> well, Can you tell me what you think? Yeah, I do. Well, I, I think it's really important to like, you know, it, first sort of look at your own moon and sort of think of yourself as a mother, because if you're not nurtured and you're not giving yourself the space you need, it's going to be impossible to then like, you can't fully adjust yourself to your children. Well, you could be empathetic towards, yes, they have, you know, moon in Leo and I'm moon in Gemini, or let's say, you know, you can have a sympathy towards what they may need but if you're not nurtured and you're not feeling stable it's impossible to give them what they need so i think that's kind of the first step is to like read your own chart and dive in and then start to understand how your astrology is playing out and how that's you can like the give greatest advice up. i've heard to be honest because i've been focusing on what they need <laughs> and i mean uh my little moon it, it just wants to my little moon wants to do spontaneous things, party, have romance with my husband. I've been to two dinners in two years, in a, two years almost. I've had two nights away from the kids only in two years. And that Leo moon is like losing its spark, losing its joy. I've been quite down because I can't, I need the glamour. I need to get my dress pre looking pretty to go dance with my husband. And it's always, if I was mooning cancer, maybe I'll be, so happy in this rhythmical routine, but I'm not, and, I, and I've not been so, uh, the only moments when I feel joyful is when I'm performing, shooting a video, you know, talking with someone like you, where, where you can express yourself, the moon in Leo, and have a laugh. And it, it's been very hard in COVID. Thank you, I'll, I will do more Leo things, definitely. Yeah, that's what I would 100% say. I mean, and of course, it's not easy as a mom when you're so busy. And especially this past year with all the restrictions, like I'm moon in Gemini and I need to socialize, which has been <laughs> oh, incredibly oh, difficult. Moon in Gemini and Sagittarius would have had the worst. <laughs> yes. <laughs> having the worst in this uh, last uh, year. Yeah, it's How been... You, well, you, you ended up teaching your 
children at school. <laughs> yeah, so that was stimulating in some ways, you know, doing that was like, and I think like it was important for me to be like, you know what, because, you know, I have my son's in the fifth house, my son, my moon in the 11th with the Sagittarius and uh, Gemini. And it's like, I'm a little bit like you in the way that like, I need to have fun. I'm not really the structured parent either. Now, while I may not have provided my kids with exactly everything that could have been perfect for them, like hope could have used more structure, I'm sure. And maybe next year we'll reevaluate, but I needed to like make homeschool fun. So I did things like parties and activities and tried to just like do what I'm good at, you know? Well, and that's so the, fifth they... house, the most brilliant teachers because the sun is what you're brilliant at. Fifth house is teaching children because uh, fifth house is to play games. And so, and especially because they're on the axis of Sagittarius, and Gemini for you, yes. You're the yeah. natural teacher, communicator, inspirer access. So you, you're brilliant. I'm sure that you're doing, if you invented games and all those things, I'm sure you did, you're doing brilliant <laughs> with that. Thank you. It's, it's hard, to, you know, but as every mom feels, I'm sure you're, it's just so hard not to be too self-critical. And I think that's like the key thing I try to do when I work with parents is be like, you need to like give yourself some grace. And that's one thing I love about astrology is, you know, if you view your child as coming to you because they need to learn lessons, even if it's not all like 100% positive, they're learning like lessons that they need to learn. This is their destined place to be and you're their guardian or, you know, you're helping them through their life and you, you have to take care of yourself first before you can. So definitely, I think you should be going, you need to like find a babysitter and go on some dates. Like they don't want to come. We live in the smallest ass island here and it's all military uh, Navy people and they, they just, they, they don't need it. You know, they, they it's military, it's Navy. They, they're very few women uh, here and they, they, they'll rather because they can receive help somehow, you know, from government right now. So everyone is refusing us. So that's why I'm saying, okay, we're going to Europe <laughs> for six months at least. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get, I'm going to go out to restaurants. I'm going to go to glamorous events. Everything is open in Bulgaria. So I'm going to go to fashion shows. I'm going to go to, <laughs> I'm going to go to uh, parties on the boat, whatever. It, it, it's not just party that Leo needs. Leo needs just to feel noticed. You see, I've been yeah. wearing those gray t-shirts this is so not leo moon it's like only <laughs> t-shirts and something my, my spark is dying <laughs> so that's that's what i'm gonna do and i'm so excited well okay, maybe we should give an advice to women moms according to their moon what do you think can you can yeah you, can yeah I, can you i think that would be great <laughs> what do you think for each of the 12 signs, for example, if anyone is a mom is watching us. <laughs> yeah, can... I think that would be great. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Um, yeah, we can just start from Aries and go yeah. through. Yeah. Okay. You can do one sign, I another, and like that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'll start with the Aries moon, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, as an Aries moon, you have like a real need to be seen as a leader and have some physical you know, exertion of that passionate drive that you have. And, you know, it's, I think, really important to give yourself the time to do physical activities for one. Like, you know, if it's yoga that you're into or CrossFit might be more appropriate for like an Aries moon, maybe. <laughs> Whatever it is, you need to make sure that you're like allowing yourself that time. Don't suppress or put aside your like physical needs. Uh, just for your children because if you do that you're not going to be able to be there for your children you're going to actually drain your energy by not filling that uh very passionate need and also spending like passionate time with your partner if you have one is important for an aries moon i would say absolutely <laughs> uh taurus if you have taurus moon i think these are probably the best moms with taurus moon because they're calmer you know they have more patience but how do you nurture yourself well the simplest thing is you need the five senses. Um, Taurus rules the five senses. So anything, when you have a bit of long time, look beautiful nature, spend time in nature, uh, have a garden, plant flowers, so grow something or have a time to cook at night and, and not just cook, slap on, you know, something, toast and butter. Uh, do it visually appealing and uh, 
the best is if you don't have to cook, but go, if you have time with your partner, to good tasting restaurants, to some wine tasting, where there is a good quality, luxury, organic foods. And, and if, if, you can have a, uh, if you can have a day away in a month, somewhere in nature, in a villa, that would be perfect. And of course, they love luxury. So um, go buy yourself the best sheets, go buy yourself the best, such kind of little things of self-care so important for you as a Taurus moon where the five senses are nurtured, good Egyptian cottons, some silk pajamas, some good uh, aromatherapy at home. So that's, that's a simple self-care routine for Taurus <laughs> moon moms. That's perfect. I love that. Sometimes I wish I was a Taurus moon. <laughs> I just, I love Taurus moon. It seems like the perfect mother sign, but yeah, so Gemini moon, which is me actually. So for myself, well, I think that really you need to be intellectually stimulated and socially. So sign up for some classes. Like if you are needing something, I mean, especially now there's actually so many more online classes than there's ever been. Like explore a topic that you've always wanted to. That's one way, especially one if there's some live aspects where you can be interacting with people and you know, getting that sort of intellectual stimulation, buy some new books or go to the library. I mean, you don't have to buy them, but like spend some time reading and nurturing your mind. But then you really need that social aspect, which has been difficult in COVID. The thing that I started doing after a while of COVID, I mean, at first I was just freaked out and didn't know what to do. And I was just like, so sad. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> then I was like, you know, I'm going to make Zoom appointments with my friends. So like even doing that, if that's all you can do is so helpful. Like get on Zoom, talk to your friends, even if you haven't talked to them for years and get on your phone and text everyone and just get communicating, like get that energy scattered out and really like nurture your intellectual and social needs. Perfect. <laughs> Um, I'll go to cancer. For me, they're like uh, Uber moms. If you have cancer moon, you care about everyone else, but you forget yourself. And with the cancer moon, uh, I've seen it even with men. Nowadays, fathers are also can play the maternal role. I've seen yeah. it with a few men that are actually, they're married to women, but they, they are the mother <laughs> and they have cancer moon. So you have to remember that uh, when on the airplane, they say first put your own oxygen before you put to the baby. And that's what Cancer Moon forget. They mother everyone. They try and, uh, you know, oh, here is a cup of tea. Here is a blanket. Are you okay? And da -da -da -da. Uh, Not only your children, your whole family, your spouse. You try to, you think you are obliged to make everyone comfortable and you forget yourself. And that's why for them, it's not even necessarily physical, like for Taurus a Moon, like they have to, pamper themselves with spas and massage and whatever. It's, it's more like they need some alone time. Uh, they need some time. I think nature again can help them. Disconnect being close to water, taking baths. Cancer is a water sign. So make it like a ritual with a bath that every time you feel stressed and overwhelmed, go there, listen to some meditation music because cancer rules the soul. Uh, it rules uh, the heart area as well around here, the breast. Um, and I would say definitely if you can go to retreats a little bit, like on a spa somehow or on anything by the ocean, walk by the water, this will take a lot out of your, uh, this is kind of a self-care ritual for you and uh, to pay the, and to listen to your needs as well, not just the needs of the others. You, you are not meant to mother everyone. <laughs> Forget that. Remember that, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so home cooked food and so on. I think they would be the ones that kind of thrive a lot in pandemics and, and very close family situations. As long as they give this a long time, a little bit, usually in the, and, and for them, it's very important that they have security, that their home, if you can't deal everything, find someone to clean your home because cancer moon people, they, they feel the best when their home is well ordered and where, where they feel basically that, they want to be home and they want to be, and, and they, you know, so I would say even get some help with home chores. So you can just enjoy the feeling of being at home. Not that you're always staying there and having chores to do and fix and so on. If you can afford it, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I 
Yeah, I love all of that advice. I mean, and some of that, like even, you know, outsourcing help if possible, just for anyone right now is like so helpful. Um, yeah, so for Leo Moon, which is you, but I think it's like really important, especially in the time where like you haven't been able to be out as much to try and like make any experience as fun as possible. Like buy yourself some leopard print pajamas and wear them around the house, <laughs> you know, like really get fun in whatever way you can within the limitations that might be around. And absolutely like trying to get out. Like, I love that you're going to Europe and you're going to be able to get out and do things. Cause that's so important. Like you need to be seen and you need to be regal, like the queen that you are yeah. and sort of really nurturing that, you know, that, that real lioness power that you have. And I think like, you know, I'm Leo rising and I, I have found it like, well, not my moon. It's just been really helpful. Like when I was so stuck at home, like I did order myself like some very expensive pajamas, like the only outfit I've bought. This year. <laughs> but something like that. <laughs> really a good way to just like, you know, get out or, you know, try and find ways that you can shine within your like community in your area. I mean, you know, recording like a video, maybe you should teach a lesson on something that, you know, recording videos of yourself, put yourself out there. And this is kind of a time to really let yourself shine as a mother. I mean, if you need to take more selfies of you and the kids to like boost the ego, that's a great thing to do. Like to go ahead and do that. Like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely and they're very proud parents like they want people to admire their kids this is my you know <laughs> so the applause for sure yeah I think just find ways to get that spotlight you know on you and if you were having a hard time like I definitely as a mother it's like on you as the mother with the children like bring them into the show kind of thing like let yeah. them like let yourself shine with them yeah, and, and I constantly beat myself, why am I not good with organizing routines? But I'm brilliant at playing with them. So give yourself credit for how fun mom you are. <laughs> yeah. With, with Virgo Moon, uh, actually, I don't know anyone with Virgo Moon, <laughs> a, a close friend with children or anything. But uh, I would say for them, again, it's an earthy sign. And the self-care routines can be very much about making a good smoothie because Virgo is very health conscious. And they'll feel very good about themselves as a woman when they're really on a good routine, a health routine. So they to give enough time for themselves in the morning to get up, to get their supplement. If you don't have supplements, I think Virgo Moon really benefits from supplements. And I'm, I'm saying maybe it might be like a cleansing tea. It might be like a camel. It's not necessarily just some pills or whatever. But they, they, they feel like cleaner and godlier. And again, for them, it's very important to have at least more organized home because even if they're not aware of them, if it's a mess, it really puts a disorder inside of them as well. So when they're feeling down, actually, it might be even like a healing remedy for them to clean up around, to pick up around a bit. I know that's what all the time moms do, but for them, it's like... Oh, you know, organize your wardrobe and stuff. This, this gives them, or if you can find someone to organize them really well, because it will give you such like a healing for the soul and have your healthy routines there, connect with earth definitely as well. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's quite, uh, and, and I think they can be quite good to some kind of hobbies that are more working with small things like, I don't know, making bracelets or, uh, because they, they love to focus on the small things. So this is what is their comfort zone with the moon there. Something that you that requires skill, which is Virgo is very skillful, uh, that may be intricate painting of some sort, but something that is also with details and uh, or maybe making clothes somehow. This again can be, I've, uh, um, you know, like uh, customizing clothes or something like that. And because they always, and also, learn to take a break. Virgo Moon, they always want to be helpful. They always want to serve everyone. They always feel like they might even have a, a lot of self-criticism, what kind of mom they are, that they, they have this perfectionist streak and a lot of, they, they can more easily notice when someone criticizes them about their parenting and they can more easily beat themselves up with self-critical talk about that as well. 
uh, and, and because they want everything to be perfect, the clothes, the what, it, not, you know, there are always exceptions, of course, but they beat themselves for that. So they need to give themselves more credit <laughs> because they're probably one of the more perfect moms there. And they need to uh, give them time, themselves time for their own routines that anchors them and centers them, especially when they're more physical, like more tangible, like with foods, with good healthy foods, smoothies, uh, supplements and um, yoga and such kind of stuff for them as well. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah. And so for Libra moons, I think, you know, I mean, the key thing I first think of with Libra is balance. And so it's like really trying to find some balance within your home, which can be obviously quite difficult when you're raising young children. But it's if you can find ways to incorporate balance, like into your daily routine, things such as like meditation, yoga, I think is like really perfect for a Libra moon. Some things like this can really help you create like internal balance, even if sometimes externally it's hard to get that sort of balance that you crave. And then, you know, trying to, to create or keep with some sort of schedule that gives you a balanced self-care routine. Like you're going to use, you know, maybe you wake up earlier than the children and you have an hour a day that is yours and really use that time to sort of nurture yourself. And I mean, Libra is also an air sign and they definitely have this need for intellectual stimulation and being ruled by Venus. There's a lot of, you know, there's like a sort of love of beauty. I think of like the Libra Venus as much more, I don't like regal, like the Venus in the city or like in Greece or something versus the Venus in Taurus is so earthy. And I think that it's really, you want to like give yourself some of that beauty of the, you know, perfectly balanced aesthetic in your home and make yourself feel beautiful. That's important for Libra Moon. Like put on makeup, even if you're not going to see anyone, that's okay. Like if it makes <laughs> you feel good, do it. Like that's totally okay to do and go ahead and, you know, buy yourself some more makeup stuff, do whatever you need to feel pretty and balanced and, you know, aesthetically pleasing. And also like working on your home and trying to find like some, make it a beautiful space so that way you enjoy spending time there. Those are some of the things I think of for Libra Moon. Wonderful. <laughs> it sounds nice to be a Libra Mom. Sounds more chill. <laughs> Compared to Scorpio, yeah. mom, if you're a Scorpio moon mom, <laughs> I, I have my best friend, Scorpio moon mom, and she was like so on her kid in the sense that she was, um, uh, she was into his business always. And I'm like, chill the, you know, just give him some space. <laughs> you don't have to know everything about him, you know, and it's like they, 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 there is almost like uh, kind of compensating sometimes I've seen it being like uber moms again. Uh, the Scorpio, it is a little bit about control and it's about they want to penetrate, they want to merge with the child. And they, it's so it's okay to give them independence. It's okay to let them, you know, um, to give them space as well. You need your space as well because you're a very sign that absorbs a lot of feelings to shake up those feelings as well. You need your own private place. If you don't yeah. have, if you don't have a private secret garden, if you can't make that, uh, you need like a, maybe a bedroom for you or a corner for you that is like your own cave where you can re retreat a little bit, hide yourself, give yourself permission to hide, give yourself permission to, um, you know, to not be always, because Scorpio is very alert, they always are on the alert, there's danger, there matters that maybe that's why they're very protective sometimes because Scorpio has this ability to smell when there is danger or you know, so it's like, you know, there are good things in, you know, not, don't worry about your kids so much. And uh, it's, it's allow yourself to maybe even focus a little bit out of the emotional into the more physical as well. But of course, some good fun time for them can be exploring the occult and astrology, such women, so many women that I know with Moon in Scorpio are into occult, into their favorite time is to read psychological analysis, to try to understand the personality of others, and that recharges them up. But of course, the alone time that Scorpio craves as well, and intimacy. You, if you're such a mom, you need to have Especially if you're a single mom, it might be a bit hard with Scorpio Moon because there's so much about 
merging on a deep level with another. You need to keep your sex life or at least the intimacy with a partner. Uh, or if, if you're single, maybe have someone that you can confide in. I think also a good thing would be like, not because you need it, but have a, a, a like a psychologist. You know, they, they just go talk about mon whatever you want to talk. It's not necessary to explore deep traumas and things like that. Just so you can express and put into words those deep feelings that are just so profound for you that, and, and it will help you like a release in some way. Also energy work. Uh, Scorpio rules the chakras and your moon day is very sensitive. So you can be, when you feel overly stressed or whatever, acupuncture, it's also Scorpio needles that they put on chakra centers can help you a lot with stress and self-care and some energy work like, you know, Reiki or whatever. Uh, that can be very helpful for you. Um, of course, tantra, sexual, sexual release. <laughs> so, so I'm romantic a long time if there is no one else there. <laughs> you know, reading a mystery book, it's a water sign in the bath again. <laughs> but hiding away, just put candles so it's a bit darker. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can't think of other things right now on the spur of the moment. But uh, yeah, in, in those... In, in that area, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was great. I mean, that's a lot of really good. I love the one, especially like, uh, you know, seeing a therapist is really helpful, not just because like, it's not that you need to necessarily maybe process trauma, maybe you do, but just to have that space alone with your, you know, with someone else. And then that is designed to be a transformative relationship. So you can get out some of that and not have to put it to the child. Or if you have a very good friend that you can confide everything in. Scorpio is one of those signs that, they need to, to go and share with someone, a very, someone you trust a lot, like all my Scorpio friends, like we always discuss deep emotional, they, they love to discuss deep emotional matters and give advice to others. They're great at giving psychological advice to others. And actually she always feels like, wow, I feel so much better when I talk about, and I always share her my biggest secrets, you know, because you kind of open to a Scorpio moon. I don't know why, but people come and tell you, like, uh, oh, I, I'm married, but I fancy my colleague. I'm like, ah, you know, they, they, people come to them and tell them their secrets and share. And actually, they need the same, they, they need this intimacy with someone. If It can be with a sexual partner, with a very good friend to share very deeply personal things. And that recharges them. It's self-care for them if they don't have the psychologist, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. That I, yeah, that's all like really good advice for the Scorpio moons. Yeah, I've I found also a lot of my clients end up being Scorpio moons because I think it is that the interest in passionate transformation and all of that, which is I do. Lo I actually really love Scorpio moons. Um, yeah, so sad. Yeah, <laughs> always. <laughs> and the always something I found when they become moms they become more beautiful than before Scorpio moons because they, this motherhood, which is the moon, gives them the triggers, the Scorpionic energy of transformation. So they have, uh, they have makeovers. Like all my friends with Scorpio, when they became moms, they started maybe not immediately, maybe a few down, lines down the don't, but it gives them tremendous power to transform themselves physically, their appearance, their body, uh, to recreate this themselves. So this, power of transformations awakens with parenthood. Okay, sorry, carry on. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's that real transformative power of Scorpio. That's what I love about Scorpio, definitely. Um, yeah, so Sagittarius moon. I mean, Sagittarius moon, I mean, the first thing I think of is like, wander a little bit, like go on some trips if you can with your children or without your children. I mean, obviously, in, terms of self-care, you know, doing something alone or with your partner would be great as like a restorative time, but also just like taking your children to the museum or somewhere where you're like learning with them is such a great way. Like embrace that sort of fun, fiery energy by just literally getting out of the house, even if it's a walk down the road, like make everything fun and an opportunity to learn more with your children, which is what you love to do and what you crave. And also it's like, you know, you need some change, you know, as a mutable science, like you really want to switch things up. So I think that it's really good if you can be like spontaneous and embrace that. Like, don't feel bad. Like, okay, we're not going to school today. We're headed to the science museum because I want to do it. And your kids are going to love that. You know, they're going to get so much from you being your authentic, fun, uh, 
you know, exploring self and who knows like the philosophy lessons you'll give at that museum. But those experiences and embracing spontaneity with your children is like such a gift and it's a good thing to just go ahead and embrace it. Cause I think sometimes, and like you were saying too, I think fire sign moons feel like a little bit guilty that they're not, you know, structured and ordered, but you know, being a fun mom is a cool role to have and your children are going to remember that they're going to love that. And so it's like really embracing your gifts and just going with it because you know there's no perfect way just being a structured parent doesn't make you a perfect parent so just like do what you do the best and for Sagittarius I really think of that like you know learning also explore your own desire to learn um you know taking courses is a great way or just you know even like sharing your passion for reading and learning with your children so like reading time with the kids or let's say you're interested in mythology or uh, energy healing, find ways to che teach your children that as like a way of self-care, but also, you know, with self-care shouldn't just be about the children. And I think that yeah. there's also a very physical side of Sagittarius. And so like getting out there and like doing competitive uh, sports or joining like a softball league and getting some of that energy out is a good way so that way when you're home you can be more centered and you don't feel so like pent up yeah so that's some of the stuff awesome. i think of yeah <laughs> very good i was i was thinking about capricorn but maybe you can help me a bit with capricorn because um i don't i don't know many people that actually moms with capricorn because i like to use real examples and i i can give you how i see it as a you know the uh the theory of it but Maybe because you've worked more with moms and children, you can help me with Capricorn moms. What, what would yeah, you Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I actually, and I do have a friend who's a Capricorn moon. And I, I find, well, one thing Capricorn is, you know, in some ways uh, feminine, even though we don't think of it like that traditionally, because, but it is a feminine sign. So there is a very nurturing quality while even though being ruled by um, Saturn, it's definitely more ordered and a bit more disciplined. But I think that like teaching your children, well, I, I'm focusing more on like the children, but self care wise, let me think. So, you know, go ahead and set goals for yourself that are far out, like that are hard and that you're going to achieve because you are going to achieve them. And so set these goals, like I am going to do one hour of yoga a day and complete this intensive yoga training because I want to be a yoga teacher or, you know, I want to learn how to free climb mountains. I mean, that's kind of like perfect for Capricorn because of the, I was yes. thinking the mountain climber. Yes. <laughs> I mean, and it's so like maybe just trying things like rock climbing, some of that physical things and getting into nature, an earth sign. So like getting out there and just spending time in nature as like your sort of centering thing, like build that into your schedule mm -hmm. because it's important to like, literally write it out as a Capricorn moon like my goal is to be taking care of myself this is like number three on my order of goals or however you you know do it and I picture the Capricorn being very you know determined in this aspect so make it a determined goal to take care of yourself and you will certainly achieve it and it's like yeah I think of a lot being you know physical in some ways like getting some sort of goal that you can physically accomplish and then also this like spending time in nature and that goal oriented and don't criticize yourself if maybe you're not as much the fun mom that like a fire sign would be like you are the mom who is like teaching them the importance of setting goals creating boundaries for yourself and that is such a powerful gift for and your children. And it shows you so they want that. I'm currently having progress moon in Capricorn. It's just ending. I'm a bit grateful, <laughs> but it, it was, it's, it's almost like you don't allow yourself to have fun because you think you have to be productive and always doing something. That's what I felt the last two and a half years. So like, and uh, I out filled down every time I didn't, I didn't work. So actually it's, First of all, you don't always have to do things. You don't always have to be productive. Yeah. But for them, it will be healthy if they have uh, something else rather than the children as outside, maybe like a career, even if it's not a career, like you said, some other goal, because that's what makes them feel good about themselves. When they are 
achieving something, chipping away at, at something little by little to feel productive than that they, that, you know, that they, to feel that ability to be in control again, not only with the children, but outside of their lives. So that it, it is important. It means like more work for them. But it is something that, you know, that I, I, it's just, I think it was probably my hardest progress moon after Scorpio. <laughs> But uh, yeah. mom, first I was down a lot and I was always worst case scenario. I would feel like, oh, worst case scenario, you always worry too much with Capricorn moon. And uh, it's, uh, you know, you've already set boundaries. You have already uh, have taken care. You're very responsible, mom. So allow yourself actually, because with Capricorn moon, it is, you have to follow the energy of Capricorn, but the moon is in detriment there, as they call it. So you have to, um, antidote to the Capricorn energy, the opposite of Capricorn. So you have to actually give yourself some relaxation, nurturing, not, it's not always, you know, you've already too uh, in control and organized and, and so on. And, and you can, you know, just give yourself a bit more lightness if you can allow yourself more fun. <laughs> Yeah, especially once you become a mother, really, because like you're then you've filled your place so much. It's like you've got to take that time to like, OK, I'm going to go have fun and just like release these responsibilities I have and these, you know, all these structures. You need that like sort of break. That's a good point of the like you need an antidote towards some of that. Yeah, energy that's so planet cool. is in the fall for <laughs> Scorpio. Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> when the moon is in uh, Scorpio or Capricorn uh, or planet in uh, fall or detriment, you need the opposite a little bit because they, they don't feel comfortable enough there and you don't want to give them more of that, you know, more of that energy. You need to do some of the things of the sign for sure because it, it is who they are, but also a little bit of the opposite. So with Capricorn moon, I just felt like I felt guilty every time I was having fun uh, during those yeah. two and a half years. So uh, it's if you're born with that moon just learn not to feel like that <laughs> yeah that's definitely important so then what do we have next oh aquarius moon so um yeah so aquarius moon my husband's aquarius moon and i you know so i, I tend to often be um in relationships with people with aquarius moon and my grandmother's one but I, I aquarius moon can sometimes be you know a bit detached emotionally like has some space can do their alone things so you know that's good to allow yourself uh, the t things that you naturally need is this alone time like you it's okay to say like i need to be alone like dad or babysitter or whoever you have like you need to watch your children like i'm going off to do my own thing and then i think like a fun way to sort of embrace some of the Aquarius like inventive sort of energy and this sort of love for uniqueness and new is to just you know give yourself the opportunity to explore new ideas and new technology sometimes as well could actually be a way of like nurturing your Aquarius moon connecting with people in community because that's a big part of you know the Aquarius energy so connecting with people through online environments might be a really nice way especially as like a new mom when you can't get out it's like just difficult even pre-COVID it was hard to like bring three little babies out and so like if you can connect with other people or causes through technology that could be you know a helpful way and I think it's also like finding communities or social networks groups let's say like a cause that you believe in and then it involving yourself in that like you care about environmentalism is there some sort of environmental group in your community that you could help out in some way like that will really like nurture you and give you this sort of you know relationship with others and helping the community and also give you some alone time that you'll feel really good about because you're helping people um, but time away from the children that can like also give you that like identity of yourself independent of the family, but in still in community. Yeah, awesome. Those are some of the things. Oh, I'm listening because my moon is going to progress into Aquarius and I'm just, I'm starting to, in, in three days or something. So I'm starting to yeah. feel the craving. I want people, I want community. And it's kind of suddenly I feel like the weight's going to shift from Capricorn, like, uh, 
to to let's go connect let's be social so i i think i think maybe they can be quite good parents albeit a bit detached and distant you know but uh, it's um, there is this lightness as well there <laughs> that uh, yeah uh pisces moon um Pisces moon, definitely a long time. Pisces is a sign that needs to shake off emotionally because they're emotional sponge. They pick up the feelings of others and often they have unexplicable feelings of guilt or of, of uh, feeling kind of, the Capricorn moon is feeling responsible for everything. Uh, the Pisces moon is, they feel like if someone is upsetting the family or whatever, or it's their fault for some reason. And, and they almost feel the feelings of everyone. So uh, just a bath, definitely for them as a water sign uh, in, in a music. For them, music, just listen. Pisces is the sign that connects to the, some of the best musicians in the world have Pisces moon, like Prince Michael Jackson, Johnny uh, uh, Patrick, I think uh, Elvis Presley, they, they all uh, very powerful people very powerful musicians because that's they understand the they understand the language of the collective unconscious and it expresses through music it expresses through um cinema as well they, they need their long time maybe to watch a romantic movie or just to uh, dive into a novel on their own uh, just walk by the ocean Pisces rules the ocean. Uh, some art, Pisces, of course, is fine arts, many swords, like uh, finger paint, whatever, feet paint, <laughs> anything that uses the imagination. And of course, now it's like uh, they would say, wine o'clock moms, you know, <laughs> it's, um, it is very common around moms to, to uh, if you're Pisces moon, that's not self-care, let me tell you. <laughs> Drinking wine every night is not self-care, <laughs> the healthier ways. But if you need it occasionally, some wine. But just be careful because there is danger there into losing yourself, using substances to escape the responsibility of motherhood. There are healthier ways and maybe one day you transition into them. Meditation is one of them. So meditation, nature, this low pies and uh, art, music, ways, and travel. For Pisces moon, I, it's also ruled by Jupiter. If they can go on an island somewhere where they can, even without the kids, it will be best because they merge their identity with the kids and it's very hard for them to separate who they are. The, the identity becomes the kids. Pisces has no boundaries. So if they can sometimes just go to a foreign country very different, like then, you know, go to Maui, you know, on an island, Pisces rules islands by the sea or go, go, it, where you feel you're someone else, play a role. Suddenly you're a single woman with no children. <laughs> and for three days, that's you. Go to a spa, whatever, just Pisces can really do great role playing. So, so you really take off your skin of one personality and you put on a different personalities for a few hours or a few days or I don't know. Uh, I mean, like, don't go misleading people that you're someone else, but it's just for yourself, you create your fantasy world. And also leave time to daydream. Pisces, moons, they need to daydream. Yeah. Imagine how in four years you want to be, how you want to look, how you, because Pisces moon has one of the amazing power to capture very easily because the moon is very psychic, like an antenna, uh, to capture images and to create images from the invisible world that they can manifest and keep this as a vision that, you know, this is the magical moon where you can manifest it later on by magic almost. So have those quiet moments of meditation doesn't mean just sitting and not thinking. Meditation is actually that focus on how you want to feel, focus on how you imagine your next holiday and, and anything that disconnects you for a little bit from the, from the reality. It, I think it's quite hard being a mom with Pisces moon probably <laughs> because they're, yeah. you know, they, they're very sensitive and uh, the structure of mothering motherhood I think Capricorn moons can cope very well, like the earth moons can cope really well. Uh, and the water moons, especially Cancer, but uh, Pisces, Scorpio, they, they're a little bit, they're very nurturing and loving as well, but especially Pisces can get overwhelmed with the structures, with the routines. Pisces doesn't like routines, so give yourself some unstructured time 
where you don't have to plan yeah. anything, you just walk out rambling, you know, or just drive in the sleep and listen to music type of thing. So, and, and they can, they can be also secret romances, but if you're married, I'm not recommending that. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, that's, I think we did a great job. <laughs> We did great. <laughs> yeah, that was good. We didn't prepare for that, guys. So you, <laughs> we gave you whatever <laughs> came to mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that will be helpful for moms to think about. And it's like a really good way. And like, you can kind of take from that some of the stuff we talked about is like what your children are also kind of need. I mean, you could translate into a child's needs are not the same exactly like they may not go on vacation but there's sort of this there's definitely similar energy between your child's moon sign and any of those that we, you know we went through Absolutely. um yeah. yeah and so i know we're like uh i'm not sure how much time you have but i was wondering if i could just quickly maybe you could talk a little bit for because i know there's a lot of moms who like would look at some like someone like you who has you know successful business and you have children and like i'm wondering if you have some tips just in general for moms who are looking to like get back into work or to further their career and how they can sort of you know manage this idea of self-care and chasing their own dreams i think i'm the worst example because i don't do self-care <laughs> and I, my business was already doing really well before I got pregnant. So I had the benefit of having five years before that. I did the hardest work before I get pregnant. And after that, it just kept flowing. So uh, I, I, I can't really give advice if you're to start having a, being a mom and start now. Uh, it's, it's just, but I think like it will be the same self-doubt as before. But I think a mom will have even more drive to succeed than a single woman uh, because a mom it has a much bigger reason to live now and to you know to to for her children you know before my, my, my reasons were quite selfish for starting so I think that will help a lot uh, but uh, huh, I don't know I, I per personally I do very little self-care my self-care is sleeping these days <laughs> <laughs> that's what's a good advice for all moms <laughs> to be honest <laughs> to sleep but um, uh, don't be afraid if you have business in your mom to delegate to ask for help that was my biggest thing I, I didn't ask for help and now I'm I'm just saying I'm asking can you watch the kids for a couple of hours I'm asking family I'm asking my husband when you need to sleep when you need to go and uh, work you know don't be afraid to ask if you don't have anyone to ask this is quite hard i would say if you want to be a working mom and having a business and child you definitely have to i don't know how you're doing it homeschooling at the same time i would not be able i honestly i'm saying <laughs> that <laughs> i mean you can't say till you try it but it's uh, it, it's gonna be just too much don't try to take on too much i would say to moms you know it's uh, yeah. you can be a great mom uh, when if and if your kids go to daycare or to school, uh, you can be a great time the rest of the time. And to start your own business, you don't need to work from morning to evening every day. You need to decide that you do three hours every day, three hours and be consistent. That's, that was my biggest thing that developed my business was not that I was brilliant or exceptional or had a different vision than anyone. I was just so consistent and people start to realize I'm not as consistent now with my video materials and everything. I, it's just I can't so much I've done it too long uh, but at the beginning at least the first two three years if you say you're gonna post if you say you're gonna uh, deliver something it's if you say you have to do it you have to learn that structure and because people learn to you become especially if you want to be an astrologer if you want to be a, a whatever it is it's uh, nowadays especially if you're starting your own business it's only successful if you create a brand around it. And if you uh, basically put yourself as the face, so you have to engage on social media. This is so important. You have to, and you have to be very consistent with materials on social media. Um, it, to have like a, maybe, and maybe to have like, even if you're doing one post per day or one video per week, when you say you're doing it, you're doing it. And it might take, for me, it took almost a year before I started getting clients clients uh consistently making materials and videos even though there were only three youtube astrologers back then 
So it takes people a time to get to know you, to like you. Some people really start like a burst from the time. Uh, and these people don't even need an advice because they immediately, you know. Uh, but for those that are struggling, just be consistent and keep adjusting some things. If you're not seeing at all good results, just tweak a little bit here, tweak a title, tweak, you know. I mean, just in this field, I can recommend with this field. So constantly try and change something a little bit to see. You know, sometimes I'll change the title, I'll change the picture, and I'll see suddenly so much shift. So suddenly a video is watched way more when I change the title. So you need to be flexible experiment and you know you can definitely as a mom you can get a lot of creative ideas from your children uh, because you have to be more creative as a mom you have to play invent games this will help you a lot with your own business to have your own business you need to be creative you need to constantly think of fun topics ideas especially if you're on media somehow uh, whatever project it is you have to be imaginative creative and children are yes they exhaust and drain us physically but they definitely uh, especially if you play with them they spur the imagination so that's one thing i've seen has in <coughs> the inspiration and imagination kids can they, they, they have so much abundance of that energy that just being close to them you can charge yourself with that uh, if someone else is taking care of them while they're playing <laughs> but yeah i i personally say if you can get home and try to be a superhero if you can get someone i have someone who comes and cleans every day for me every day it's like you can't with kids you have to clean every day i have someone and i uh i'm planning that every week i'm gonna have 24 hours where i'm away from the kids once i get to bulgaria to keep my relationship going because if you're a mom and a business owner your relationship can really suffer because you you know, you're putting everything to the kids and to the business, especially if you're developing at the beginning business. It's, it's a big downer because you're pulling all your sexual energy, which is in the womb, towards the brain, for business, for raising kids. And, and it dries out the sexual desire and that can affect the marriage. So if you can find every week someone to watch the kids for 24 hours, um, someone you trust, of course, and some put some money aside for it, even if you're in the next door hotel, even if you go to stay with friends, to have one-on-one -on -one time with your husband, because that was my biggest mistake uh, for the last two years that I didn't, I could not find someone, I didn't insist enough. And that affected us. That affected us on, like we started seeing each other just like parents. And that's, you know, you, you want yeah. more than that for a happy, to have a bit of everything. So I'm gonna try and correct this now. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I think that's really great advice. And I think one thing you said, I know that I've started doing it myself because it's like there's so many different things. I'm trying to develop this business and then my husband, the business we are have going, you know, I still have to help with that. and kids and everything. It's like limiting the amount of time you work sometimes is actually helpful. Like I, I do three hours a day every day, right? Oh, and then yeah. and stop because <laughs> otherwise you, you can just put too much of yourself into it. And you have nothing left to give even the next day or for your children and your husband. And yeah, there's just, you know, and I think one thing that's really cool for moms who want to start is like you said, you have a really good reason to start right now. And you have like a real passion for you want to do something to help your children and to show your children like that they can sort of chase their dreams. And I think that's a really powerful reason to continue whether you've started something before maybe you had to take a break or you want to start something new it's because you know you really want to inspire your children and show them like how awesome you can be as a mom that you don't have to give up everything to you know be a good mom absolutely my mom was my example because she i was uh, 14 or 13 no uh, 11 sorry when communism ended so no one in bulgaria could have their own business before that and suddenly my mom said, I'm going to have my own business. And she opened a fashion studio. It was the most successful. And I had her as an example. And this inspired me that I want to have my own business. And uh, so this is so good if you're a mom and if you can open your own business. You don't have to be the most successful. You need to be able to pay the bills with it and it will make you so proud. And if you're passionate about it, it will grow. Don't worry. You know, mine took years to grow. And suddenly you might have been doing two, three years and suddenly you have a breakthrough. You know, I know women that have been doing the same business for 
four or five years and it's always the same and suddenly boom, you have you get like a great transit and suddenly something appears as an opportunity and you grab it and it grows suddenly so don't give up easily i know we get easily overwhelmed as moms don't give up because be consistent if you believe in what you're doing of course tweak things from time to time you can uh do one thing the same way always and always and look expect different results but if you keep getting good feedback and you trust in this project and whatever it is it's going to one day you're going to have the breakthrough but always there is a test almost like the universe before i'm going to give you the big breakthrough i'm going to see how consistent and committed and dedicated you are to this so maybe for a year or for two is not going to be working and because they want god only gives you or your higher self call it whatever you want uh, will give you the flood only when you're ready, only when you've been tested and seen that you're committed no matter what. Because the, and then you're given higher and higher tasks and more and more projects. As, they're given to you as ideas, as an inspiration. So, uh, the breakthrough is a gift from God. The, all, all, everything else is your own work, you know. Of course, your natural interest as well, a gift from God, but and then the breakthrough comes when you've been consistent and done everything. And from then on, it's a smooth sailing. When you have your breakthrough, it just starts growing and growing. And I'm so lucky to see so many moms around me, not only moms, but women that are uh, being so, all my friends are having their own businesses and all my friends are making it. And, I'm just, and, and one good advice, if someone is successful around you, be joyful for them because this yeah. energy of being joyful for them, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's the en your enemy. Be j joyfully making because you're sending the signal to the universe that uh, you appreciate that you receive the same. Don't feel envious uh, for someone else if they're successful. Just rejoice with them. This is always uh, something that will help. And a lot of for me, because I had a lot of self doubt. So what helped me is a lot of positive visualizations. Every time I was feeling down that my business. I'm never going to make it through. I'm never going to make money through that. And the first one year was like that, you know, even the first, the first five years, I was barely paying rent. Uh, and then suddenly, suddenly it's, it's, it's such a blessing. You know, I, I can't explain. I've never, I've never had money in my life. <laughs> it's just not to know what to do with it now. <laughs> I'm just not used to spend because I've lived all my life on, you know, counting pennies. And uh, so I'll dream daydream every time something did not work through a difficult day a difficult client i put out something no response i'll sit and daydream what the result is and i would uh, i would imagine i'll feel i'll feel the joy of it and it always overwhelmed my expectations but you have to feel the feeling of what it is to have it what it is to feel the validation what it is to get like a thousand people coming to your course or whatever just too much, but start, first start dreaming in things that feels real to you, that things achievable, maybe what it is to have 20 people come to your course, what it is to have 200, what it is, you know, and, and you raise the bar a little bit because you need to be able to believe it, to feel it. I think what has helped me with the business has been that the most. And then, and then you don't despair so easily and you build that image in the uh, ethereal realm, whatever it's called, and it's, it's exists there for you. So the universe starts bringing you all the right things for it to manifest. And don't get boggled on the details too much. That was my worry. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this project? I don't know. I'm not the software. And I was trying to be a software programmer. No, just contact. Uh, you know, don't try to do everything. At the beginning, I was doing everything alone. Once things start going good, get software, get programmer, get someone to offload just like, delegate 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 that's you can if you're just starting you can't do that if you're just starting you have to be jack of all trades but ask friends maybe for help once you can once you have something just help someone with emails with um uh you know now i don't check emails now i don't you know it's like i've learned in the last two three years since i've had kids that you don't need to do everything you can give to others and do the thing that you're most passionate about. Now all I do is videos because videos and courses, because this is what I'm most passionate about. At the beginning, you might have to do the dirty work too, be ready. But when you see that you're succeeding, scrap everything else. If you don't like talking to clients, don't talk to them. If you don't like answering emails, find someone else to do it. Just do the thing you are most brilliant at. 
if you're good at writing, if you're good at filming, whatever it is, just that thing. But at the beginning, you have to do everything because, you know, you're just starting something. At the beginning, the opposite advice, don't go spending too much money on all specialist marketing, advertising. No, do it all yourself. Even now, I, I don't have a marketing specialist. I do it, uh, you know, myself. But the things that I don't want to do that I want to offload, like the cleaning of the house, the, um, uh, the administrative work on the website, the IT responsibility on the website and all of those things, it's been such a relief. So first be jack of all trades then downsize uh, then downsize all your responsibilities and focus on the things that you're brilliant at because that will bring you the most success and money so that's i guess that's in a long summary <laughs> no that's awesome thank you i'm sure a lot of people are gonna get a lot of inspiration from that i mean for you so many good so much good advice i love the stuff about manifesting really and like imagining you know what you picture you're gonna get like you really do have to be ready to sort of receive that success. You have to be able to picture it if so you can be spiritually or vibrationally, however you want to say it, like in line with that abundance that is there for everyone if you're ready for it and you're willing to work for it. And when you keep doing that, I was a dreamer since child and I have very strong, when I close my eyes, I can imagine things in details, but some people don't have that. But if you start doing it, after imagining something two, three times, it will become so real in your head. You'd feel like you've experienced it. Sometimes like I thought that I've completed some project because I've pictured it so clearly. And I'm like, oh, it hasn't happened yet, but I know it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> it's, and it does. And it does eventually. So, and it's beyond your, usually it's way better than you imagine. That's it's, but, but you've generated that energy that it is already there. You've created it in your head. It exists already there, so yeah. It, it it this quality grows really with the more you practice it, and yeah, yeah. This <laughs> it is fun actually. <laughs> I was a daydreamer, and I keep doing it. I'll have at least twenty minutes per day where I do that, just sitting outside in the garden and imagining. I have to do it with the kids as well. Maybe how I want them to behave. Yeah, you can do it for everything. I started imagining it now how they will be on the flight, so I never let. I thought that he might scream or he might tease his sister. I just imagine him asleep all the time and I imagine him watching some movie. So yeah, it's, it's very important not to allow because negative thoughts uh, can be the biggest deterrent to your fast success because it's you're sending a, a sign to the universe. I don't trust myself. The universe says, okay, there is this opportunity for you to do this. And you're like, oh, I don't trust I can do it, you know? And that's the biggest thing that slows it down. That's why my success came very slowly because I had huge doubts. I, I couldn't believe it even, you know, I would imagine every day, but I still had huge doubts. At the beginning, many people have huge doubts. They disappear after consistent success. So don't beat yourself if you have huge doubts, but try to, you know, add to them those visualizations of what it feels like to have success. Because I, I was the most negative person. I'm an extremely negative person. People don't know the real me. I always see worst case scenarios. I always feel why I cannot do something. And I trained it out of me. I'm still like that, but not for business now. Not for, I'm like that with my mothering now. <laughs> so I need to kick it out and train it out of myself that I beat myself down on mothering. But for business, even though I don't do it the best way, I'm like, you, you get the confidence after continuous, oh, two, three times you have success, it disappears. But it's like you beat yourself down at the beginning. You, most people are. There are people that in their superior ego, they always think they're much better than they are. But mostly people feel less than they really are. It's very rare to have those in the superior ego. Most people in the inferior ego. So I'm, I'm trying to help those of them. You'll be feeling that you can't do it, but you just keep imagining it, picturing it, trying every day a little bit, two, three hours, and it will come one day. And, and now it's just running on its own. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, it's like cool. We're talking about this because like one thing, so for years I've been watching your astrology stuff. I mean, I've been studying astrology forever. I've watched your YouTube videos. And one thing I was, would always think is I'd be like, I would love, to interview her like I would just love to talk to her about astrology and then like I'm doing it right now oh, so it's oh, like, that's well, 
Yeah, like, like it's okay. never had resistance, like it's never gonna happen. You probably that would be so. Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't say, oh, yeah. it never happened, but you, you framed it in a different way? <laughs> oh, yeah. wow, there you go. And you started your astrology career and you did it with three little kids. If you can, yeah, do it. it was just like, and I had always wanted to sort of do my own, like, I'd been working, teaching communications courses and other things, but like, I wanted to really do my own thing and do this astrology and this more like spiritual esoteric work. And I was definitely so full of self doubt. And like, I would have these times where I could picture it, but I couldn't make the jump. And then I just like, I think finally it was like a God thing. Like, just like, I was like, you have to do it. You have to do it now. And then, yeah. And then I just did it and sort of yeah, it's, it's really scary, definitely, but it's also exciting. And then it's so rewarding to get, you know, to just sort of start to see yourself like, yes, I showed up. I said this class would be ready and this class is ready now. And just all the different things. It's really rewarding. I How think. long, have, have, when did you start? A few months ago? Yeah, so I only officially started the business as of like, I guess it was January is when I first like you know, started the official business. I've been doing like on the side, you know, like I would read charts for my friends and yeah. of course been studying astrology for years, but I never was like public with my business till yeah, only wow. January. There you go. And how, how do you feel? How is it going? I mean, it's good. I mean, I have a lot of goals I want to achieve, you know, and things, but it's been really fun. And I'm like amazed at how much I've learned, even in the process of just doing it, you know, like, okay, we get like all the social media stuff, all of that was like not something I was super familiar with. And it's definitely different. Like my husband's business, business we already have, which it does well. And now it's kind of like its own thing, which has helped give me this time to do it, but it doesn't need social media so much. You know, it's, no. is what it is. You build a house. It's good. You could take a picture, but that's not how you sell really. It's word of mouth. And so this is very different, but it's also so fun and great to feel like, you know, you're helping people. It's nice. Like the clients I've started working with who are not, you know, like my personal friends and be like, watch them have serious breakthroughs or growth. It's incredibly rewarding. Or you know? that. But also your Gemini moon, you, you naturally adapt to learning new things. You know, you, you don't, a lot of people have resistance and will be so frustrating having to learn to edit videos, to, uh, to put tags, how to monetize, how, uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff, but Gemini Moon, if anyone can <laughs> learn fast <laughs> and adapt quickly without so much frustration, that's you. So I'm so happy to see your business going and I'm wishing you amazing growth. Uh, I'm wishing you to, to, you know, your dreams, whatever you dreamed of, whatever you imagined, to go beyond that, <laughs> always beyond that. And to help so many people, obviously, you're, you're an amazing astrologer and mom. <laughs> thank you so much for interviewing me. <laughs> having me. Oh, thank you so much for, yeah, for this time, this discussion and for all the work you've put out there. I mean, it's, it's so great. Like work is so accessible for people too, like who want to learn. You have so much out there that they can just find on YouTube and really get deep into astrology without having to you know pay anything that's such a gift that so you've that's given one of the last actually that's the first thing for anyone to say if you want to receive give a lot for free and probably still 80 percent of my work now is free but yeah the 20 percent is seven number figure and that's it's, it's incredible i give 80 percent of my work for free you don't have to do 80 percent it doesn't mean to go, just go and do free readings for people, but give free information. That's what people need. Give, you know, uh, the more you give free, the more you will receive free. You, you see like programs like Zoom, they're free. You know? um, oops, sorry. <laughs> and you always have to give something free to receive. That's my, you know, uh, advice for people who are starting. The more you give, more will come back to you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, give and then receive. I love that. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, thank you so much for spending this time with me and so much, for doing all the work you do. Awesome. <laughs> um, you have a great week ahead. Uh, we you my, we're, <laughs> we'll catch up yeah. soon again and maybe I'll introduce you 
down the road to my audience as well. Now, now they'll see you on this video as well. So <laughs> we can start. Next okay. Week. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. That'll be awesome. Thank you. <laughs>